<laughs> an actual entry uh, requirement. So another story now, and if you didn't have to wear a helmet, would you be more likely to get on your bike? Mm. The answer is yes, according to a new study. The benefits of cycling are undeniable. It's good for your health, the environment and even traffic congestion. But according to new research, Aussies are reluctant to get on their pushies because of our compulsory helmet laws. 20% of people say they'd ride more if they weren't forced to don the old stack hat. And the study's author reckons it's time we ditch the law. Australia is one of the only countries in the world where adults are fined if caught without a helmet. When the legislation was introduced in 1991, cycling numbers dropped by around 40%. But health authorities argue they save lives. I see too many brains that are messed up, too many people that are messed up by uh, not having a helmet on. So if it spurs people into cycling, is it worth considering relaxing mandatory helmet laws? Or do we still need to be told how to look after our own heads? Jeff McLeod is a cyclist and member of Helmet Freedom, which wants to ditch our helmet laws. Jeff, just because more people would ride, do you really think that outweighs the risk of more brain injuries? Uh, it does. The health benefits are immense for riding. Uh, we all need to be more active and, hel and helmet laws prevent us from doing so. But the stats are pretty convincing. I mean, Queensland Uni found that wearing a helmet halves the rate of head injuries. In fact, a 74% reduction in the likelihood of severe brain injury. I think I'm going to stick with wearing the helmet. Well, those stats are quite old and there's been a lot of new research done. And, and basically, a helmet cannot prevent brain injury. It is impossible for any helmet to prevent brain injury. And uh, helmet laws have only really succeeded in turning off a generation of uh, cyclists from doing what we call everyday cycling. Jeff, I think adults can make up their own mind. I mean, I don't need anyone to tell me whether to wear a helmet or not, but is there an argument that perhaps we should set a limit where children should wear helmets up to, say, to the age of 14, 15, 16? Well, of course, children should wear helmets because they're often learning to ride and they fall off a lot. And uh, we're not saying that uh, have no helmets on children. We're saying allow adults the freedom to choose, just like we have in the rest of the world. But that comparison to other countries really doesn't stack up. The relationship here between motorists and cyclists is very unhealthy. It's very aggressive. I've ridden without a helmet in a number of cities around the world, but I wouldn't do it here in Australia. Well, the notion that things are different here is actually not correct. Uh, they have a lower injury rate in Vietnam and Italy where drivers um, are driving like mad people all over the place. I mean, this debate is great, Jeff, but do you think anyone's actually going to do anything about this? I mean, no politician is actually going to want to change the laws and be responsible for someone's death. Well, the political will, five people are going to die on the roads today in cars and in fact in Australia you have a greater chance of getting skin cancer while you're riding than you do of having a brain injury. Unfortunately, 20 years of government uh, propaganda about how dangerous cycling is has really um, ha taken its toll. It's done for cycling what Jaws did for swimming on the beach. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jeff, can we just solve this problem by inventing a helmet that doesn't make you look like a tool? Well, uh, there's probably been, there's probably got a whole team working on it somewhere, but um, to have these nanny state rules coming in and booking cyclists for cycling through a very safe environment or a park uh, or someone getting a loaf of bread is just ridiculous. Well, I think I'm going to stick with the helmet hair and keep wearing my helmet, Jeff, and thanks so much for chatting with us tonight. Okay, thanks for having me. <laughs> Now, those stats there aren't old. It was research published this year using crash data from 93 to 2008. So pretty recent stuff. There you go. Now, so you've actually had a serious accident, though, haven't you, whilst yeah. wearing a helmet? I was a teenager. Um, the, the chain of my bike came off, and I went through an intersection on the side of my face over two lanes. And if I hadn't been wearing my helmet and had that, that bit of distance, I would have scarred one side of my face and probably done myself pretty serious well, You also injury. ride a motorcycle, so you know what I helmets do. are about, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'd like to see more people ride bikes cycling is wonderful but I do worry it just takes one time doesn't you it just an injury like that mm. yeah I, I would as I say but we need better laws regarding motorist respective cyclists we yeah, need the right. one meter rule to pass yeah, but your issues about and... the hair <laughs> no, no <laughs> yes it is. Your issues about the the, hair. The, the thing is the net benefit if you increase the number of cyclists. It, it currently it saves the health yeah, system yeah, about blah, blah, thirty blah, blah, million blah. dollars a year, and you're going to save more if more people cycle. Yeah. Well, Tara, it's been a pleasure having you sit with us tonight. Please My thank the Tara Moss. Tomorrow on the project, do fairies really exist? Did I know?